Who would have thought that Tennessee and Ole Miss would be a matchup of top 16 teams? Now, we knew the Vols had high hopes, but the Rebels have made a fast break from also ran to also ranked. And in case you missed it, after Tony Stewart tapped Casey Kane in the back and spun him out, his pit crew paid a visit to Tony's pit crew, and West Side Story breaks out. <laughs> then there is Scooter McFadden, who looks like he fell asleep near a three-year-old with crayons. Ten Sports Director Steve Phillips joins us from the White House with more on today's ceremony. We were joking, Steve. She was signing autographs. <laughs> Well, there were a few people in the room who were um, noteworthy. I know some people went up and had a picture made with Hillary Clinton. Obviously, anytime the president is in a room, uh, there were a lot of famous people there. John Glenn, Bob Dylan, and Pat Summit. You know, of course, Coach Summit made her mark in the sports landscape with 1,098 wins and eight national championships. This was her ninth trip to the White House. This was the first one, though, that wasn't a team award. It was about her and that battle that she made so public a year ago as she fights against Alzheimer's. But Coach uh, President Obama, when he talked about Coach Summit, uh, talked about the accomplishments that she had athletically, but also the impact she had on people, including his own family. Everybody on this stage, uh, has marked my life in profound ways. And I was telling somebody like Pat Summit, you know, when I think about my two daughters, who are tall and gifted, uh, and knowing that because of folks like Coach Summit, uh, they're standing up straight and diving after loose balls and feeling confident and strong. Of course, this is the uh, program that they handed out today in uh, Coach Summit's bio right there with uh, John Glenn and Bob Dylan. Had a big group of people over by the fence wearing orange. Don't know if a bunch of fans came to see Coach Summit. She did not, unfortunately, come down to, to talk to us, so we didn't hear from her. And, and Bob Dylan didn't come by. And after all those years of him asking uh, the question, you know, how does it feel? I thought maybe we'd get to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Okay, we have to ask you, how did it feel for you mm -hmm. to actually be there and watch this and be in the White House. Well, you know, being in the White House is something I've always wanted to do and never had done. So it was it was pretty uh, pretty interesting. We went in, we slipped into the briefing room, watched part of the White House daily briefing before we went over and and uh, you know, of course, to be in the room with the president and the Secretary of State and other officials and um, and of course, you know, Coach Summit, we've been around uh, and, and know, but still, it's always fun to be in her presence. And uh, it was really an amazing day. And then to meet John Glenn, who was a who was one of my heroes, a uh, very special day here in Washington for me. And it was fun to watch from mm -hmm. our end too. We were watching on television and we were just proud as proud can be for Catch Coach Summit. So, Steve, yeah, thanks so absolutely. much. Great experience for you as well. Coach Pat Summit has been to the White House many times, eight of them, as a matter of fact, with her teams after winning national championships. But today she was here for another reason. Coach Summit, one of 13 recipients of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Pat Summit's strength and character exemplify it. So the Lady Vaults head coach emeritus adds another award to the long list of those she won. However, this is the highest you can win as a civilian in the United States. At the White House, Steve Phillips, 10 News. We want to turn now to 10 Sports Director Steve Phillips with more reaction uh, from folks hearing today's news. Not necessarily a surprise. No, I don't think anyone was surprised at the announcement necessarily, maybe the timing of it, but uh, I think most people had expected something like this might be in the works. The question is, how do you fill the shoes of someone who has walked where no one else has walked? How do you replace a national treasure? Well, there have been many things said and written about Pat Summit in her 38 years of coaching, and there will be more to come. But it will be hard for those things to overstate Summit's impact on women's basketball and especially the University of Tennessee. It's chilling to think how close the Lady Vols came to losing Summit to Kentucky early in her career over $1,000. Now UT is planning a news conference tomorrow. It will start at 1.30 p.m. It will be on the court that bears Summit's name at Thompson Bowling Arena. Holly Warlick will be there along with UT Athletic Director Dave Hart and Chancellor Jimmy Cheek. You can watch it live on Channel 10 or streaming on WBIR.com. And on the day the news about Pat Summit came down, there is another story about her son, Tyler. Marquette University has confirmed that Tyler Summit will become an assistant on Terry Mitchell's staff in the Golden Eagles women's basketball team. Tyler 
Tyler worked with his mother while a student at UT before walking onto the men's team. Marquette says the official announcement will come in the next few days. And he certainly got the coaching gene too. He, did, he does it very well. Thank you, Chris. Very, very nicely done. Well, you know, Coach Pat Summit has had an impact on so many players. She had four drafted just this week in the yep. WNBA draft. Many have gone to professional careers. Many have gone on into coaching. You think uh, not only of Holly Warlick and, and others on her staff, Nikki Caldwell and Kelly Jolly are a couple of names that come to mind, but also Shelly Collier, who coaches right here in town. Shelly played for Pat Summit and is now the head coach at Webb for the girls basketball team. She had this reaction to the news today. I'm proud of my, my coach. I think that very nicely sums, sums up what up. so That's many definitely. people think. And we are uh, on our website, WBIR.com. We, we will have a section there where uh, you can go and thank Coach Summit and uh, and talk about the things that she's meant to you and, and maybe to your family and certainly to women's basketball. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know this just this year there was a player from Florida uh, who after the game with Tennessee talked about that she was the only reason she was playing women's basketball was because of Pat Summit. So it's pretty amazing the reach oh, of that sure. life and the reach she's going to continue to have as they as she continues to push for Alzheimer uh, research. Yeah, I'm convinced she has more life lessons to teach us all. I'm sure she will. Yeah, just a remarkable lady. Steve sports now and a guy who needs to learn to respond to Coach Summit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, I thought we were going to critique Todd first, but we'll we'll get to we'll that. get to that. We'll later. get to that move a little bit later. Yeah, the reality of the change with the uh, Lady Vols has had time to settle on most everyone. Holly Warlick has already made her first hire. Lady Vols are marching on. Life is changing in a number of ways for Summit and her son Tyler. Steve Phillips joins us live with coach. Hey, Steve. Hey, John and Robin. Yeah, first time since they won the NIT uh, season tip off. The uh, ball's back at home. Coach Bruce Pearl and I have been chatting, and you're already forgotten that because of the group you got to play tonight. Yeah, Steve, it's amazing how quickly we move on, and I uh, hope the players have moved on as well. Steve Phillips joins us from campus with his story. Steve. Well, John and Robin, a lot of young men find themselves in tough circumstances at a young age. It's the ending that made Michael Orr's story a movie. For a lot of people here in Knoxville, it was a very familiar story. They have seen it played out in the life of Case and Jackson Garrison. Touchdown, Jackson! Like, I had a lot of passions and goals that I set throughout my lifetime, and so far I've been... Uh, having great success of achieving what uh, what I want to do. Kaysen Jackson Garrison didn't have a typical childhood. He didn't meet his father until he was an adult. And after he moved to Knoxville in the sixth grade, his mother developed a drug problem. Not yet a teenager, Kaysen told us over six years ago he was left to fend for himself. Well, what I did was I just spent a night over my friend's house and keep bouncing from house to house and um, just, you know, my friends, friends was wondering why I stayed out so much, but you know, I was just saying I like spending a night with friends and stuff like that. You know, that's the way I just kept it that way. Didn't let nobody know. The movie Blindside describes the life of Michael Orr in Memphis from roughly the same time. Kaysen hasn't seen the movie. He hasn't needed to. He lived it. You know, I did what I had to do, even though I didn't know sometimes uh, where I was gonna get the next bite to eat or where I was gonna get to lay my head. Uh, I knew I was going to survive the next day and I was going to be happy and the little triple kid that I was. Kaysen met Roger and Darla Garrison who adopted him. He blossomed in the stable environment, in the classroom, on the field, and as a person. Kaysen won the 2003 Mr. Football Award at Central and then signed to play at Vanderbilt. Two seasons later, he returned to Knoxville and Neyland Stadium and had 121 combined yards and a touchdown in the Commodores' 28-24 upset win over the Vols. 2005, I'll never forget. It's one of those things that's installed, embraced, tattooed in my brain. This is where Kaysen's story and Michael Orr's life take separate paths. Kaysen wasn't drafted, but did catch on for a season with the Kansas City Chiefs before heading home to wife Courtney and sons Kaysen II and Colton. I feel like it hurt me more than help me you know it you know i spend you know months away from my family training in baton rouge louisiana you know I, those are months that i can't get back of watching my boys grow up or being with my wife so Kaysen chose to pursue a new career as a police officer he will graduate from the knoxville police academy tomorrow something he could never have imagined as an 11 year old growing up in the walter p taylor homes what was installed from what I saw is you, you don't know, you don't talk to the police. You know, that's just not, but they're not bad. That's what people need to understand. We're not, 
not here to come get you or mess with you, I'm here to help you. At an important time in his life, the Garrisons were there to help. Now, Kaysen is preparing to return the favor. I'm here to help anybody who's willing to take the help. You, you gotta help us help you. You know, my goal is to help one person change one life a day in any type of way possible that I can, you know, no matter what it is. If I could do that, then I could go to sleep better in my life. You know, I know I'm setting a great example for my boys when they grow up and everything else. Now, as I mentioned, Kaysen will graduate from the police academy tomorrow. His mother, for the last two years, has been off drugs, and she is now involved in Kaysen's family with his wife and two young boys. And by the way, they will add a third son to the family in July. We'll be back with more 10 News right after this. Sunday Sports Extra. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the return of the full-blown, full-length Sunday Sports Extra, just in time for one of the biggest wins in Tennessee basketball history. Highlights and reaction from that, of course. The Lee Ball's big road win, NFL playoff action, plus Brent Hubs of AllQuest.com is here to take your calls and talk balls, basketball, football, and recruiting. January 10th has been circled on a lot of Tennessee basketball fans' calendars for a long time, looking forward to the rematch with Kansas after losing last year in Lawrence. Well, the Vols would get off to a good start this afternoon. Thompson bowling Wayne Chisholm making a three from the top of the key for the first points of the game. Then on defense, Cole Aldridge tries the shot. Chisholm there for the block, though he was in foul trouble much of the game. Kansas makes a run. Tyshawn Taylor knocking down the three, puts Kansas up six. They led by as many as eight. Ronaldo Woolridge answers. He hits a tough three from the wing. My mama put me in the boat and we had car seats. I'd watch him, you know, ski back and forth and um, oh, ever since then I've probably wanted to ski. Bree has literally grown up on the water. Dad Chris was an avid skier who used his military background to formulate a training program. I was a Navy fighter pilot and so we learned over and over how to do certain things in a jet and I guess that's where it came from because we do that type of thing over and over and over and the girls have really bought into it. Kaylee and Bree are already elite skiers and the youngest, Jana, is coming along. Bree's competitive nature and work ethic have made her one of the best in the world. It was uh, raining and cold like it has been and uh, it's raining pretty hard and I said, all right, baby, let's go in the dock and we set this one out. She said, is it going to, the going to stop with rain? I said, well, no, it isn't. She goes, don't ever do that again, Dad. We're going skiing. The decision to ski rests solely with the girls. They take the winter off and play other sports. Kaylee, for instance, is on the Farragut girls basketball team. We have chosen to allow the girls to live a normal life, go to school, sleepovers, you know, go to football games, and be a kid. And in the spring, I mean, they're rare to go. When I ski, it makes me feel like I'm just by myself out there. It's just me in the course. I don't have to worry about anything else. And and competing is just, I mean, I've always loved competing in anything. So just adding on that just makes it perfect. The girls do like to have friends over to ski in the summer. And yes, that competitive nature comes out among family members. We have a personal best on for um, practice. And what we do is um, her how many buoys we are close to our personal best. And whoever loses gets to do the dishes. Uh, I have clean hands here uh, the last couple of years. So I, I, the last couple of years, you know, I've talked trash in the wintertime and how good dad's going to be this year. But uh, for some reason, they just don't believe it anymore. 